What is going on guys? Welcome to Wednesday's video. I am currently in Virginia Beach, which you guys already know. Uh, I'm actually going to go pick up my dad's Corvette, uh, and I'm going to be uh, uh, getting inspected, but I'm kind of in a hurry. So I'm, I'm recording this little intro video now, but I have to go get his Corvette and get it inspected before 4 o'clock. And it is currently 3.23, so I am like going batshit crazy fast, at least trying to, to go get it done. So I'll catch back up with you guys after I get to the inspection place, and we're going to do a little walk around in my dad's car, and we're going to drive it. Fun disclaimer here, I have never drove a Corvette, so this is going to be something new. Um, I've Obviously, I've sat in one, I've sat in a couple, um, but I've never actually drove one, so it should be pretty interesting. I just need to remember that it's not a Lotus and it's not small and it definitely doesn't uh, uh, handle like one so I gotta kind of respect that but let me go get this done. With the inspection sticker off, I'm gonna turn off the car here. We're gonna do a little uh, walk around real quick, just so you guys. That's weird. You guys can kind of see uh, the outside, and then we'll get the inside started up, and I'll uh, kind of go through everything in here that I can see. There's a lot of stuff in here. Um, by the way, guys, this is a 1999 Corvette. It's a C5. Uh, it came from my uncle or my great uncle, my dad's uncle, uh, and he had it for basically its entire life uh, and took really good care of it. So my dad got an absolute steal on the on the Corvette because uh, it's family. It was family bought, uh, so it's it's like a really really very very clean. But we'll go on the outside and I'll show you some of it. For the most part, it is a pretty much stock C5. Uh, my dad's license plate are absolutely amazing. He just got them in, and yes, it says not late. Got an aftermarket exhaust. I'm not sure which one it is. I don't remember which one my dad said, but it sounds really good. It's not too loud and it's not too quiet. Uh, but for the most part, it's mostly uh, stock. He wants to get black rims put on it. He just got the windows tinted, and it looks so much better li like that. I believe he's going to be going with uh, red uh, covers on the uh, brake calipers. Uh, you come around the front, it's got the C5 lifting headlights like all C5s do. In Virginia you have to have two plates, so that kind of looks pretty good because it has a big void there on the uh, Corvette anyways. It's, it's a really nice car, It's uh, like I said, it's been very well taken care of and it's my dad's first ever Corvette uh, and first sports car really that I can ever remember. One of the coolest things about this car is the fact that uh, my dad actually was able to get one. Um, it's not really... Oh, God. It, it's so weird. It like pushes you up and pulls you back whenever it wants. So the main reason my dad, uh, you know, just now got, uh, you know, his first sports car and, you know, he's about to retire and everything. Uh, you know, a lot of people can uh, sit here and say the in the midlife crisis stuff. Trust me, I've given him a hard time because he fits the void perfectly. He's retiring and he's like midlife and he got a Corvette. I mean, it fits great. Honestly, for my dad, that's not really the situation. My dad uh, uh, raised four kids, me, my older brother, my little brother, little sister, uh, and we moved a lot and he focused always on us. Growing up, we owned a minivan and a Prius. Probably the two girliest dad and mom cars you can buy. He did it for a reason. And was perfect to fit a family of six comfortably. Uh, it was just perfect for that and it always was really great. He still has it. And the Prius was actually bought because of me. I, I played hockey, you guys know this, all growing up. And we traveled, you know, hundreds and hundreds of miles every week. Uh, you know, sometimes I had practice two days a week and the, and the rink was 40 miles away. So that right there, both ways, is 160 miles. And then we have a game and the game would be out of state. So we'd constantly be moving, uh, like just constantly moving and going, like I said, hundreds and hundreds of miles a week. Back in the day, that's when gas was over $3 easily, uh, and the Prius had just come out and it fit my hockey bag and it was perfect for us. Uh, my dad got like 50 miles per gallon, if not more, and we were he was able to uh, affordably take me to hockey, because hockey isn't already expensive. Yeah, a lot of those things you can say midlife crisis, but it's more or less that my dad took care of his family before he took care of anything else during his entire life and this was kind of his uh, first time actually getting something he wanted this is the first car in my 24 years of life 
This is the first car I can ever remember. It's something that he wanted for him, uh, not for putting his kids in the back of it or to take his kids somewhere. I feel like this Corvette has a little more of a deeper meaning uh, when it comes to that, just simply because it is it is more for him uh, type of thing, and it's not uh, it's not a car to benefit other people. Uh, it's to benefit him, and that's why I think it's really cool that he got it. Let's show you some stuff up here. So first and foremost, this is the most advanced 1999 car I have ever knew. Like I did not know C5 were this advanced to be honest. You have all your like little uh, buttons up here, your fuel, your gauges, uh, your trip, your options, your E slash M and your reset, which will control everything down in there. Pretty typical uh, standard uh, tachometer thingy here. It's it's pretty standard for like a 90, 1999. On the left side you have a display arrows, the option, and I believe this is probably how light the dash is. I'm gonna take a guess and that is what that is. Uh, that is, no wait, that's the light thing, so I'm not sure what that does. Gauge option there. Down here which is really cool so you have the uh the mirrors so you can control your mirrors just like a modern day car but these actually seem a little more convenient it's not like a knob it's actually like arrows so you have your doors locked and on you have your windows both windows are auto down which is really neat and then you have this cool freaking memory option based on how many people buy, uh, like drive your car regularly you have these two options uh that i'm pretty sure result to your seat uh, and basically it'll it'll get your position, uh, it squeezes you. These things right here, these squeeze you. They come in and conform to your body, uh, and this moves obviously like that, and it's all electronic. Every last bit of it is electronic. So I'm gonna press one. I'm not sure if my dad set it up yet. I'm sure he has, but I'm gonna see if it does anything. Yeah, okay, so it moved me backwards. This is my dad's setup. My dad's a little taller than me, so I, I have to push it up a little bit, but I'm gonna press number two and see if it does anything. Holy crap, the steering wheel came out. Watch this, watch this guys. Look at that. And you press number two, the steering wheel comes out. That is insane. I, find, I, I know a lot of cars have that option and can do that, but the thing that I find so crazy about this one is it's a 1999. Like it's it's literally a 1999 that has those features. Like everything is electronic. I'm sure you can hear it, it's 107 degrees out today, so the air conditioner is really going but it also has the climate control. So like you can set it on like 70 degrees and it will maintain 70 degrees in here. I had no idea that was even a thing in 1999. I, I feel like this car is just extremely uh, advanced for its year. Like it's it's extremely advanced. It's, it's as advanced as other modern cars. It also has the uh, hard top. This is the hard top now, but he also has a hard top that is glass. Uh, so it's like a, a sunroof. Uh, the entire thing is glass. All right, so real quick, take you guys out of the video. I forgot to talk about the HUD display on the Corvette. I don't know how I ended up skipping it, but on the front windshield, there is a HUD display. I'll put up a picture right now so you can kind of see what it looks like. Uh, and basically, it's a it's a tachometer, a digital tachometer that sits up there on the 99 Corvette. Again, ridiculously crazy and, and advanced for what it is, but not sure why I forgot to talk about it because it's probably one of the coolest features inside. Let's get driving a little bit. The seats are incredibly comfortable, by the way, if you're wondering. These seats are incredibly comfortable. The entire thing is padded and comfortable. It's, it's insane. So yes, it is an automatic. Uh, my dad would have probably preferred a manual if he was actually just buying a Corvette on the side of the road. But like I said, this is from a family member, my uncle. Uh, and it was such a good deal and my dad's known it's always been taken care of so he took advantage of it Yes, it is automatic. Yes, I know Give him crap for it, please. I, I know but it is a family-owned car And that's what the coolest factor about this is so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of compare this to my Lotus and Waze only because that is the only thing that I really know how to drive uh, Which is a well, it's the only thing I've really drove that's a, a compact if you want to call a Corvette compact, it's like a two-seater. So this is a this is a, a coupe, just like my Lotus, and that's kind of how I want to compare it. So let's get on it a little bit. It's got nice pickup. I'll tell you that. For an automatic and for something that's completely stock, the Corvette has pickup. It definitely it definitely has some oomph under the pedal. I can tell you that. Obviously, compared to my Lotus, it, it is a little heavier. Uh, well, a lot heavier. Uh, but it's still, like, a, the steering wheel is still extremely responsive. I still like, I mean, I still feel like I'm driving a smaller car. Uh, and, and honestly, for whatever reason, the front doesn't seem as long as I was expecting. Like, every time I've seen a Corvette, I always think, like, oh, God, the you know, how, front, how long the front is. It's going to be annoying. 
uh, you know, driving something with that that is that long. It, once you're in it, really, it like it doesn't even seem like it's that long. Like, it honestly seems like you're driving a regular car. By the way, in the comments, can we uh, can you guys convince my dad to let me wrap this? He won't let me wrap it. Uh, he's he's still in like that honeymoon stage, and he's like he's like no, I like the color, but I'm trying to get him to let me wrap it red because uh, red vehicles have always been his thing. So I'm like. It's not, it's not your vehicle unless you wrap it red. Thank you for coming in my lane because I'm not driving a Corvette. See, I'm gonna use that card now. You dick! Welcome to Virginia Beach, I guess. It's really, really hot here today. I don't know if I told you guys that. Yeah, so the most part, it does handle very, very smoothly. It drives really smoothly. Compared to my Lotus, there really is no comparison. My, my Lotus drives like, uh, well, uh, uh, well, you know those like little cars you sit in as a kid that have plastic wheels? And then you like go, ride it over a bunch of rocks that yeah that's pretty much my lotus this actually this actually rides like a comfortable car like like this is such an easy daily driver like having one of these it's easy to to kind of see why people daily drive corvettes even c5s and and like i really do like the c5 Nicely. Like I said, even for an automatic, it is pretty responsive on the pedal. If you want to floor it and get it put down, the, the pedal goes. I mean, it responds to you putting the pedal down and it will shift into a lower gear allowing you to do so. I will tell you, it is really weird. Uh, I, I My left foot, I, I keep looking for a clutch pedal because when you get in this Corvette, you do feel like you're in a sporty car because you are. So like when I'm sitting here, I'm, I'm looking for that clutch pedal. I, I keep I keep finding myself pushing my left foot down and it's not there. So it is it is kind of strange going from uh, a manual car to an automatic. So here's your controls. Steering wheel is pretty big. Uh, it's much bigger than my Lotus's. My Lotus is probably not even half the size of this steering wheel, um, which is normal because like I said, this is like a daily driver. Man, this thing is crazy. It, it is real. Like I said, I I had no idea. I know some of you probably would be like, "Yummy, you didn't know that." I just had no idea that a C5 was so advanced. Like with everything in here, like it's just like, why this car in 1999? It's hard to believe. I mean, 19 years ago, and all this stuff was in this? Like, it's so hard to believe because of how just far along this car is. Like, it's just like, it's a, it's a time before it's time kind of thing. I've been in Dan's Corvette, his C7, uh, before he hit a tree or something like that. And Dan's Corvette was really nice too, and it was advanced as well, but I don't feel like the C7 was as uh, surprising as this one is. Like, this one in 1999, I feel like really, kind of, you know, hit the socks off of people with how much stuff is in here and what you can do. The C7 is nice and it's a very, very nice vehicle, but I just don't feel like the C7 is is more or less ahead of its time uh, compared to what the C5 was back in the 99. Another funny thing to talk about is getting in and out of the car. Uh, obviously, you've heard a lot of people complain about it. Uh, I've heard Dan complain about it on uh, with the C7 and getting out of a Corvette. Blow me. Getting out of a Corvette is the easiest damn thing in the world compared to the Lotus. Now, I know not many of you guys have seen a Lotus in person, uh, more or less even seen someone try to get out of a Lotus in person. It's not easy at all. To get out of a Lotus, you actually have a mountain you have to climb over. Like, I'm not joking. There's a sill you have to climb over. You're also lower than the Corvette and your entire door, it doesn't just open. It, it, it's not just like a big ass opening. See down here, the crevice of the door is right here. So everything below this, this, above this, this all opens. The Lotus sits about right here and everything above it opens. So you have to climb over this like that, put your leg over it and then try to get out of a car that is basically touching the ground. And cars are touching the ground, but you understand what I was saying there, but I'm waiting for the, the guy on YouTube to be like, I can kill my boy, it is stuck to the ground with all four tires. Kind of a quick video about my first impressions in a Corvette, guys. Honestly, I, I've never drove one before. Uh, this is the first time ever driving one. Uh, and, and really, it is. It is really, 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 really nice. Some time ago, I was actually in this Corvette with my Uncle Kenny. Uh, he took me for a drive, but I, I didn't really get to appreciate it. Uh, I guess because I just didn't appreciate cars back then. I was much more bike oriented, but after getting into cars here in the past couple years, it's so much easier to appreciate this car and what it is. And, uh, and what it's about. I certainly don't miss Virginia Beach traffic, man. I don't miss that at all. I don't know why this guy's got his headlights on. 
What you going back there, Willis? Yeah, so overall, like, it's amazing. It's a, it's a really nice car. It's a lot of fun. It's an easy daily driver, honestly, and like, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm really surprised about the C5. Never knew this much about them. And I can tell you that it's, it's a really, really great car to, I mean, even daily driving, they're not even that expensive. I mean, you can get one for about 13K with 100K miles on it, and you know, it'll still last a while. All right, so we're back on the Juke now. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know it was not much uh, you could see of driving. I did want to stick the camera out the uh, window and kind of do a little drive-by, but if you guys remember me recalling, my dad just got the windows tinted, uh, and you're not supposed to put the windows down for like, I think it's like a week or something like that. I'm not sure exactly what the amount of time is, but he told me specifically do not put the windows down. So I did not want to uh, potentially ruin that. So I didn't do it. I mean, that is very different about here than uh, West Virginia. Is there's motorcycles everywhere. Uh, definitely uh, forgot how much that was. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. This is my first time ever driving in a Corvette. Um, I thought it was really cool. It was a cool experience to do. I've never been able to drive in one. I always see them. You know, you, a lot of YouTubers have Corvettes. So it's cool to kind of experience one for a change and actually get behind the wheel. And I can definitely see why people really enjoy that. Would I ever trade a Corvette? My Lotus for a Corvette? No. Although my dad's car is nice and I really, really love it, I love my Lotus. Lotus handling is, uh, you know, tenfold better because it's half the size, obviously. It does not feel as comfortable, I can tell you that. My seats in my Lotus are nothing compared to those beautiful Corvette seats. They are so comfortable. And also on top of that, the drivability, it's much more convenient in a Corvette. The Corvette is much more of a daily driver. Uh, that's what that's what the Corvette is. It's a fun daily driver. Lotus is more of a uh, quote-unquote driver's car, right? It's more of a you're sacrificing everything in the inside. You don't have uh, really good air conditioning. Your seats suck. Uh, every rock you feel on the road. So it's not really a, a, a car that you enjoy out of comfort, if that makes sense. But you would enjoy it in different aspects for what it is. Uh, and that's why I really enjoy my Lotus, because I like it as a driving car. It's as close as you can get to a motorcycle in a car. Uh, I mean, that's exactly what the Lotus is. But nonetheless, the Corvette is a great car, especially the C5, I really did enjoy it. If you guys, you know, are young out there, C5s are not that expensive. Like I said, 100K miles are like 12 or 13K. They're, they're pretty affordable. That, that you can afford that on a job living at your parents. I know most of you guys are your parents, so don't act like you don't. It's a great car. You guys should definitely look into one if you can't afford anything else or if you're trying to get into, I feel like, the entry-level Corvette. Uh, I feel I, I think it's a little higher than the entry-level Corvette. Uh, C5, I, be, I, I would like to say it's a mid-range Corvette. Uh, it's, it is a really nice car. It's got some speed on it, especially if you do some stuff to it. It's a great car. If you guys enjoyed this video, if you didn't, whatever, I hate you. So either I'm going to end the video here and you're going to say bye-bye to me, or I'm going to show you some good Mexican food because I'm hungry.